Greetings, greetings, market rebels. Welcome to this week's Macro Measure. It's Sunday, November 19th, 2023. It's just about 11 a.m. here on the East Coast. I'm Wayne. We've got to get things started here. I've uh, got to head to Charleston to pick up my youngest daughter. So I've got to get the videos out to everyone. So without any further delay, let's get rolling on the disclaimers. And um, there's the trusty general disclaimer. And then here is our trustee market rebellion intellectual property rights notice. And then I'm going to leave up this week's stream with its changes there and just say, boy, you know, it's just been one heck of a November and uh, <clears throat> not easy to trade. Excuse me, just a lot of opportunity, but maybe not always easy to trade. So they always keep it interesting for us. But that's the, the stream we'll be discussing this morning and then. Here is last week's stream. I don't think I messed this up too bad, but there may have been a couple things. But anyway, I'll leave that up for a second, but you can always pause and come back to that. Um, let's get our shift taken care of right away. And that's going to require that I move to a different screen. So let me share screen number three. And then hopefully this will work uh, where I can move things around a little bit and get rid of that and there we we should see let's see make sure this is shut up there you are so we do have the target probabilities up uh which is good that's what i really wanted to have up there so i'm going to i think it just dumped my uh it did somehow it dumped that to a different location on me when i tried to neutralize that so put this over here out of the way so here's you know here's this well Here's the summary of, of last weekend's comments. We'll start out with that. We were saying remain DEFCON free. Still keep your eyes on TNX, DXY, and, and VIX. And um, they were all pressured, right, this past week, and the market remained buoyant. We also noted that the squeeze relief rally worked very well when it should have. Um, in November, coming into the close of October, into November, it was working really well. The third year of the presidential cycle script tracked very well. They're still working. All right, we'll look at those. Um, <clears throat> on recent cocktail hours and other webinars, we discussed um, the cup and handle that, that we'll show again. Had high targets, right, that could really come from this, which we'll briefly talk about. Um, and then we said, right, that you, you can get a pause or a pullback and they basically serve the same purpose, right? I, I think most people prefer a mild pullback to a pause, and I can't argue with that. It's just that the way that the gang operates, whether in super bull mode, which they are, um, both are both serve the same purpose. Take that really short-term froth out of the market, let it correct back down to still approaching kind of overbought on the dailies and other measures that are a little chunkier. But that's all you really need in a really strong bull phase. <clears throat> and then you can keep going again. So, excuse me, um, they rested by going sideways. The rally broadened out. And so it's just check, 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 right? If you're looking for all these things to tick off the list that we were talking about, they're going to need to do this to start bringing more things along. They really accomplished it. You really can't say that they didn't. Um, we did note that you do have to keep focusing on the price action. Don't forget about risk. November often provides stabilization before end of year rally for bonus time and then how they sell people on how the next year is going to be wonderful. And we've been, we've been saying, don't doubt the power of what we witnessed, but right, we have seen many rally attempts hit the wall at the same time. <clears throat> this one hasn't, um, and certainly it hasn't fully reversed either as part of those notes because uh, I think it's got a lot to do with conditions. And again, it's got a lot to do with uh, many different things, but um, I do think a lot of it really started at the very least with a squeeze. And I think market conditions were predisposed to per permitting that to happen. And it's now taken on a life of its own. Um, but we'll talk more about all that stuff. The outcome last week, let me just get over to maybe, let me see if I can get this. The outcome this week was that uh, we had... Monday held, and I, I, that's not a good not a good view for that one. Let's see, there we go. Maybe I can use this one. So here's Monday. <clears throat> Monday holds, and then you get that Tuesday jump. And that Tuesday jump, you can see that really put it put us. We thought we were going to work into this area between these two um, these two lines. I have drawn the blue and orange, 
And what happened was it just gapped right above it and right there, <laughs> right on it, right? And then opened uh, there on Tuesday with the with the news that developed, right? With the yields coming off. And then they just kind of held it there. So again, they've kept things uh, paused nicely. You've got to give them their due. Um, so we did say that, I think there were a lot of these things covered in sector situation, especially could we be seeing a higher low sort of a base camp, as I call it, that they could go from. And, and again, that's what happened. So that's that something I think it's always worth <clears throat> keeping an eye on when you feel that the, the phase that you're in is is very strong. Um, they handled things deftly, right, because you did get overbought naturally on this massive gap. But three days of not doing much um, that followed, not doing much more, that did take a lot of that overboughtness and kept really a potentially bullish complexion in place. Right now, you are approaching 70 on the RSI, just to throw a number out there, depending on where you have your RSI set to. But you know, basically, uh, I think the one I have here on the, that's on the traditional 14 is saying you're right near 69 and a half. So you're effectively getting close to the official overbought. It's already there for me. I mean, you're close enough. But does that mean, right, that we instantly fight against it? Of course, it doesn't mean that. So uh, that's what we have to look at. And I think, oops, I'm getting a, getting worried here with think or swim. Um, the other thing we have to note, right, is that this is due for a pullback. There's gaps. We all know that at this point. But I don't know if you're going to get that. And the reason why is because of what we already discussed. So that's why I had this chart waiting and ready here on here, because we've talked about this. This is what we have talked about in cocktail. And uh, it does sort of have this is the SPY. It sort of has that cup and handily type look and they're busting, you know, right through it. Now, if they get through here, they know they're, they're breaking out and all you're left really with is a challenge of the all-time highs. And so if you look at this, you had this strong, right, this strong move since last October uh, that fortunately, right, we we saw some good signs maybe like two weeks from after the bottom and said, just, again, you got to be careful. Never thought that it would turn out to where they were just, we were, we were, were able to rally all the way and until July, but that's that's what they did well through July. But now you see, right? We had this triangle. We 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 were talking about um, in in different ways, and they were able to take things through there for now. This is a, obviously very strong move. I did see that someone put out some research that said this kind of oversold to overbought uh, transition reversal. Uh, it happened. Um, it's it's one of the uh, five fastest uh, cases of that in I think the last forty to fifty years. So it's not un, excuse me not unprecedented, but it's just something that you don't see that often. So that has been if you feel like this has been really impressive, it it really has been really impressive, and you might even question the reasons why that it's happening. But and I would probably agree with a lot of them. But again, we always go back to just see 1A, um, that's, even though I don't type that every week, 1A is kind of like the shorthand for must focus on price action while not forgetting risks, right? So that's really what it is in, in the short term. You, even though you've got these growing concerns, you still have to go along with the trend and where the momentum is. And if you want, I think if you want to be successful as a shorter term player, that's really your only choice. If you want to take longer term positions, it's maybe a different story you can fight. But what I found in doing that uh, is that it's very draining. If you can still you can do it, you can win, but if you go through a lot, a lot to eventually cross that finish line as a winner, and uh, it'll really take a lot out of you. And I think the easier road, even though it might be harder to adapt to that, is to just embrace what's there and go with it. Um, it's a lot easier than fighting and having to go through so many trials and tribulations before you finally win. Just my two cents. I thought I'd share that since we're here. So we did talk about the summary of last week. We talked about this week's outcome. And um, what we can say really is that they have the sector and major ETFs. Um, they all began to participate. I'll flash that quickly. This is what we talked about sort of, I think, in macro measure, but we definitely talked about it in sector situation. 
I did put arrows in a couple of different places to say, right, are we seeing uh, higher lows that they can work with? I didn't put them, I didn't put them on every single sector, but you get the idea. They're all over the place. And they were, right? And they did get those sectors going. And if you're wondering, well, you know, th is this really concentrated? It was concentrated, but again, they really did legitimately broaden things out. I think if we look, I think if we look here, yeah. So here's just some of the breadth measures that I've got. And as I noted last week, right, the McClellan summation, it just continues to improve. Um, McClellan oscillator, right? It did correct, but it's also on the way back up again uh, because it did get a little, it did get a little extreme right on that after that first strong surge, but they've broken out on other different things like advanced decline, cumulative, that kind of thing. They broke things out. So I'm not fighting with, uh, that's why I'm saying like, if you want to keep looking for reasons to fight against it, you can. And I, I would probably, again, be sympathetic to your economic arguments, but those don't really hold water in the market very often on the short term basis. You know, that's something as a as a econ finance dual major, I learned the hard way when I got started, you know, how how just how much they ignore um, not only just uh, in concurrent, you know, economic information, but even economic information that's seemingly uh, got some forward looking aspects to it. Potentially that also will get discarded if they want to. Right. And that really happens again, going back to the environment. Are you in a bull market? Ask environment. It doesn't mean you have to be in a bull market, but are they acting bullishly right now? Overall, do you see bad news get shaken off and good news celebrated? Things like that. Very easy tell there. And um, that'll tell you what mode things are in. You know, how how hard is it to get involved in stocks that are moving up, right? If it's not easy to get involved because they're trying to run things, that's just telling you overall you're in more of a bullish mode. So just some, just kind of like some comments on that. Um, wanted to say, right, that let's take a look at some charts and then we'll get into the tabs. But wanted to just say that you've got the verticalness right in this right now. If I kind of crunch things to give us sort of a more of a like a yearly view, this would be about a yearly view. And you can see that there are some vertical moves, but there aren't many vertical moves, right, that are more vertical and of greater magnitude than this. It's probably one of the top ones uh, we've seen over the last year. Uh, so you do get vertical, that does get you concerned, but as we have noted in the notes, right, and really the current assessment, you do have to keep your eyes still on TNX and DXY. Like I have been saying really now for, it feels like almost two full years where that to me became more of a focus, uh, something you got to really not ignore anymore. But look, dollars getting roasted and yields are coming down, right? So that it all, to me, like th this rally, again, even within that context or that view makes sense. VIX, it, you know, has its tail between its legs and with, um, the holiday, if we if we get kind of a a, a stable market to hire, uh, this thing could really get smoked. Um, you know, come Wednesday afternoon, uh, it could already be in trouble in a big way. Um, Friday, you know, I, I really unless this market is really super overbought again, I think the VIX would have a hard time on Friday as well. Unless again, you reach a really overbought status. But so you got to keep your eyes on those. But the reality to me is that the week will likely be largely determined on the um, NVIDIA reaction. So you might you might have a little, who knows what happens, is a little listless in front of that. Uh, I'm not, I don't know, but really the charts here have sort of fixed themselves at the moment. There's nothing really to me that's extreme about this at the moment. It is overbought in some ways after the run that it had, but it's really not anything extreme where you would say like, hey, even with really great news that they, th they're they going to uh, bring the market down because everyone's already bought. You know, I, I it could be. I mean, I, I don't know the particulars, unfortunately. I don't have the time for that. But um, to me, it, it's not overdone. And what I would say is that most of the time when they're acting bullishly and they've got really one of the most important stocks in focus, which this, I believe this is right now. Uh, the chances of them turning this into uh, 
a, a stronger upside reaction or greater than a stronger downside reaction. And I base that really just on my experience of when the market's acting bullishly, they tend to treat things or find a way to treat things bullishly. So I don't want to, I'm not making predictions. I'm just saying this is the general outcome within market context that I always harp on. You tend to get the the, the stock reacting in the way that is in line with the market psychology at the time. And we're in a strong, I am calling it a super squeeze. You know, we're in a strong, a strong squeeze. Has it run its course? Maybe, I mean, I don't know, but I would say that it, in most cases, unless things are really awful there, and I'd be surprised if they were, in most cases, I think they're going to try to use this to set the tone. It might even be, as I noted, it might even be the exclamation point for this rally where they put together a very strong reaction. Now, let's take a look at that while we're on it, because if you go look at the straddle, the straddle is offered right now going out on Friday, of course, the straddle is offered at uh, 492.50 is what we're really close to. That straddle is offered at um, about 30, what is it, $39 roughly. So I don't know if vol will lift, if vol will contract, but you know, that's that's the expectation. So clearly, right, that tells you you could trade up to 530, right? You could be trading up to 530. If there's an upside reaction, this is how the market has it priced. And you obviously could be trading down to the 15 SMA, which is right there in red. Um, I'm sorry, even lower than that. That would be a more of a 40, almost a $40 reaction. My bad. So that would be probably where, where's where's that going to put us at four, four, uh, 52 and that I'm trying to think of where that brings us to. I guess that brings us right near this rainy day really. So, you know, that those are your that's where your your uh your spread would be as in terms of the the anticipated reaction. It could always be larger or smaller clearly, right? And I think a lot of people looking at a chart like this would say would kind of get sucked in on this like, "Hey, this thing's already gone haywire." Uh, so there could be some people that get put under even more pressure by fighting against this thing. Um, so just be careful on that. Um, but look, that's what I'm saying, right? It clearly with that thing, being able to make a big, being occupying the place that it does in the market, being able or anticipated to make a very large move, right? Not quite a 10% move, but pretty solid move. Nonetheless, 8% move. One, and again, it could be more extreme than that. This could really obviously move the market, move semis move a lot of the AI, uh, all the companies that are talking AI big, could move them all to a degree, right? So I think that's really it. So to me, like this is the thing that puts the exclamation point on the rally and really puts it in, you know, double secret, super squeeze, overbought readings, or it's the, as I wrote, it's, it's the old, it's an old term, but you know, an old phrase people would use but you know it's this a long skirt to hide behind, right? It's thinking you know, of the kid that's uh, in trouble and trying to hide behind his mom, his mother's skirt, many many decades ago. Um, that's what that would give this that would give the gang if they want to take things down um, to maybe get ready for another wave higher <laughs> into the end of the year. Nvidia would maybe set the tone for that. I I really don't expect that just because of the market environment and kind of this. Uh, the AI, you know, obsessiveness and all that kind of thing. So I, I, again, that would just, that's more just based on instincts from doing this for so long and kind of gut than, than it is anything else. So just wanted to cover that um, in terms of, right. we noted this last week, but they definitely love to convince people that, you know, things are wonderful around the holidays and you know, there's, these are like, I, I don't really believe in coincidences the way I used to, but you know, gasoline prices are down, the markets up, rates are coming down. You know, it's all perfect timing for the holiday season, um, the, you know, the, the year before an election. So, you know, take a, take that for what it's worth. Um, I do think that you're just looking at, again, without news, NVIDIA is going to probably set the tone for whatever happens this week. And, they want to keep things merry and bright for the holiday season. Uh, but most of all, right, they they want to keep things merry and bright longer term as well. Uh, people that are in power, they want everyone to think everything's wonderful. Um, this is the way I remember it my whole career. 
And then the the nothing better than painting them th these guys basically marking things up, having squeezing people, forcing people to buy, poorly positioned folks scrambling, performance chasers, blah blah blah, and that all makes these guys that are long you know, look like great performers. So just a little bit of cynicism there. I do think the wall and worry is still in place. I do think that helps bulls. Um, all the X, the XLK, XLC, SMH, right? All these things are performing, right? We can look at those. So there's SMH. Now, if I back us out here, you know, there's SMH and I don't think you've ever been higher, right? So that's the thing. It's short-term extended without question. You're at a 70, I think, four reading somewhere near there on the daily on RSI on one of my views. Yep. And on this one, too. No, there's no doubt about it. But something like this with an EPS reaction, it it could they could print this thing up from there. Um, it's clinging to this pretty vertical support line that I've got drawn there to kind of bring the view out. You can see that more. So this is definitely right an extreme move. But it's not like this is completely unprecedented because look at look at something like this, right? Look at this right here to go from 127-ish to 151 really in, in three sessions, right? From this low, well, I guess three and a half, whatever you want to call it, four sessions. But that's it's just incredible. So these things can do incredible. Even an entire sector can do really incredible moves. And this is certainly a one in focus. But XLK... You know, XLC, all these are continuing to perform and hold, or hold up there. They're all getting to where they're overbought. Everybody, their brother, the horse they rode in on, like I always say, they all know this is overbought. People are looking to fight against it. I can understand why it has been like in some ways extreme. It has been in some ways um uh, absurd. But this is, again, I think this is where the market people always have an explanation that they're, they're, they try to justify it, I think, based on economic underpinnings or interest rate developments. And certainly some of that could be true and part of the mix. But a big part of it really is the internal plumbing, like we always talk about, where that was that you had market conditions that were just ripe for this. And uh, it was the perfect timing. And you had also... The internal plumbing was really set to deliver this, it looks like as well. So you add it all up and that's what you get. But this is really something I'm going to jump ahead. And I'm going to just give everyone this. You can jump down to the bottom line um, where I talk about this week's important consideration. But if you want to go on this little journey here, just bear with me while I top, uh, sorry, input these to get this all in here, I've got to, I think I skipped over meta and um, let's make sure I've got, did I do that? Amazon, Google, I'll do meta. I try to do them in order so I don't, alphabetic order so I don't forget uh, forget them. Um, and then I've got uh, NVDA plus Tesla. So here they are, right? The, uh, ooh, I made a mistake somewhere. Come on. Oh, there it is. I thought I put plus and I put underscore plus. Yeah, let's hope that works. Hopefully this will flip over. We'll get the mag seven. We've got them right there. Um, do we? Do I have them all? I skipped something. What did I? No, I didn't. Okay. I, I do have them all. So what I want to do is bring a little more history in here for every, for all of us to check out. And um, it might be good if I just go go five year, but this is this is an argument I'm willing to put out there. I think everybody could see right that these are nearing that all time high, uh, and when you get to resistance, you're this close. It can get really dicey, right? You can get you could fall short. You can go right to it. You can then fail in both cases. You can go above it and fail. You can go way above it, pull back still fail, you can go way above it, pull back, hold and go. But what I'm saying is uh, they've been able to really keep these buoyed, right? Clearly, after they put that low in earlier this year, they've been generally running these things and holding them up. So they ran them really strongly into really deep into July. You went into a relatively mild correction. If you look at the overall pullback, 
of this, this package of the mag seven from this big run, you have a pullback that that's the depth of the pullback. So they probably held on to ballparking it at like, you know, 75% of the, of the move. In other words, they didn't retrace that much. That's really a good sign, right? That it didn't give much back to this point. And now they've got this thing potentially leaving this consolidation that it was in. And if it does go and break out, remember, they were able to really keep the market looking really solid because they're able to do that with these biggest of the big dogs. And these companies are also ones that generally have a lot of cash and they're a lot of them, of course, are engaged in share buybacks. So just as much as I'm concerned about the economics of everything, I don't want anyone to feel abandoned that I'm suddenly become this uber bull. I just want everyone to know that this is why we can't, in my opinion, this is one reason why we can't rule out rule out a bullish market next year, uh, at least to start the year. So uh, that would be because these companies are going to keep making their EPS look better and better, even if it really isn't. But the other side of it is they're going to keep doing that and their EPS might naturally get better and better because they're basically like black holes that just keep sucking in money from everyone. So if they continue to perform, it's going to be really hard for these indices to break. We've already seen that. And what I would say is that beneath the surface of this market, there really was a stealth bear market. A lot of stocks until the recent shenanigans have been crushed, just really, really crushed. So in some ways, right, you had a bear market already, even though they didn't really let the major indexes fall as much as maybe some would anticipate or expect or believe is justified, right? So I just want to plant that seed that to kind of keep everyone trading in the here and now and not allow your bearish economic take of much of which I share to cloud your short-term trading um, view, right? I just think that's really important because if we go back to my, and I know we're jumping all over this week, but it's kind of a complicated time. And I, it is what it is. I'm just got to do what I think is right. <laughs> but right now you're set to sit tight. Okay. So let's, this is the, me laying the groundwork for why I'm saying this. You're set to sit tight. You're set to sit tight. And then suddenly, right. They've got this drop possibly happening in March, which is not that far away. The drop picks up probability as you get closer to May, where you're, if you look at this, where we are right now, there's a greater chance that we're down by then, according to the markets. So there could be a rally because of this. Nope, this. Yep. Because of what we normally see, which is the fourth year tends to be your second best year in the presidential election cycle. So we're finishing out the third. We all know from me covering this every week or you doing your own work that what you normally see in is a kind of lows get made in October, at the end of October, they start bouncing and stabilizing the market in November. November tends to end strongly. And then they just kind of keep the party going in for most of November with a little bit of a wrinkle in the middle of it. But for overall, and they keep the party going in December through the end of the year, which fits them right like a glove. And then if you look at the fourth year, the election year, right, it can be just hold on, hold on. And in some cases, um, but if you look at what happens uh, with the NASDAQ, which a lot of those companies are part of, that starts out the year strong and probably that'll pull everything pull everything with it to some degree or at least keep things buoyed. So um, that's th this is tracked really well this year. So we have to probably keep giving it the benefit of the doubt because even though circumstances differ from year to year, third year to third year uh, over the course of time and you're in different parts of rate cycles and different factors, right, this is how the behavior has in the aggregate um, per, de, de, de determine market prices overall. And you can see that you know, this stuff does have some, there does some have some validity. It holds some water. Um, in other words, like without 
without a lot of doubt uh, that you can affix to it, you probably should embrace it if it's working is what I would, how I would look at it. But uh, this is uh, certainly right. An encouraging situation where you, the way that things would finish. So if they do that and then they keep things going, I think they're going to do it on the backs of the mag seven. And if they do, uh, I think it's going to be very hard just because of all the waitings for this market to get to get cracked, right? So I don't think we should really confuse what's happening in the economy with what these guys do with the market. I think only until they're really forced to confront that maybe things are really spiraling economically. And I don't know if they're, they're really spiraling. I'm just saying, should that happen? That's when they would probably have to acknowledge something. And remember, that's also part of the notes this week because the uh, the the market really doesn't start getting smoked until the Fed cuts. We already showed that several times. Uh, if someone wants to see that again, bring that up in a webinar or you know uh, send us an email about that in the forum, and we'll we'll I'll I'll get you the graphic on that. But that is what we found is that once we start cutting. When the Fed, in other words, is acknowledging that things are slowing, that's when it's rough. But I still think, look, it's been higher for longer. I think it's created problems. Um, I think there, the, there's still a lot of uh, stealth support out there and liquidity. Um, but again, that doesn't really matter, right? It, it, the, the reasons why this is happening are secondary to the fact that if we're momentum traders, it is happening and we've got to find ways to be involved. So I look at it like this stuff is breaking out, right? If you look at the big picture, this stuff is potentially breaking out. Again, I always remind folks when I can, it can always be a false breakout. You need to mentally prepare prepare for that. But look, right? This is, if you're someone that dabbles at all with kind of like waves and fibs and all that, uh, right now, this looks really good. It really, you have to admit that. Like as a technician, I think you have to be object, objective and say this looks really good where they were able to have this massive, massive reversal of 2022 in in these in these big dogs. They kept nearly all those gains. In fact, right, they made new recovery highs and they're right near potential breakout point. They're really right there. Now, I don't know if it goes straight through. I don't want to sound like I'm predicting that at all. I'm just saying that this thing is within a stone's throw, no problem. And the stocks in here, some of those charts look really good. I it's I don't want to really fight against anything. I, I think it's going to take, an, at this point, I think it's going to take a real serious shift in news to derail this thing for the end of the year. There would be need to be geopol or rate some kind of rate influencing news that really hurts things. Otherwise, I think they've got clearance to work their normal third year of the presidential election cycle, normal normal December magic, late late Nove and through December magic. I, I it needs something to derail it in my mind at this point. And again, with next year being the second best year, uh, they've got themselves set up very well. And probably there's still probably a lot of people that are at the very least under invested and maybe even still sitting it out. So, and that creates some of this stuff. So um, that's what they've got. They've got the wall of worry, that, which you know, they love to be able to feast on the wall of worry. And they've got that because there's still a lot of doubt out there myself. I'm expressing it too economically. But again, we just showed that breadth really can't be argued with. And we also showed that, right, these the cup, cup and handle, some of these high targets, what they've been able to do has all been, I think, impressive. If I bring us back over to this graph right here, and I I pull, uh, I, I give us more data to look at, kind of draw back from it, right? I mean, that really almost looks sort of like almost textbook where, Right. You're just in the long again, you're in the market. It's the SPY over the course of many years, you know, about 10 years. You're in this long term uptrend. Again, a lot of it's engineered. You can talk about QE, you can talk about all the rest of it. And you get me on your team with a lot of the shenanigans. But if we're trying to make money from price changes 
I find it to be much easier to go with the, the dominant trend, the primary trend that still is overall up at this point, unless, of course, this is, turns out to be a low or high. They start reversing almost immediately from here. They can't get through and they roll over. You know, Then maybe you could say, well, there is a trend change possibly underway. But for now, you've got to give it the benefit of the doubt, I think, um, the way that things are shaping up. And they're very close to taking this cup and handle and launching it. And if it did launch, right, just doing a ballpark kind of measured move type of thing and that would even if you don't even if you bring sort of like the top of the the cup right to here you're looking at 110 points through on just 100 percent push so you're looking at you know somewhere in the neighborhood of i think 570 or 5700 um on the uh, spx some ballparking it i'm just doing quick and dirty here so you know that's that's going to be up there right that puts you up up here somewhere, I guess. Let me see. Put would put us up somewhere near here, and lo and behold, it may actually matter where. And we'll put that there, and we'll see. It depends on how fast it were to happen. And you know, if you were to go up to here on a really strong push, yeah, a little bit higher than that, I guess. But so, just kind of a couple of different things are saying. You could actually work your way up, depending on how long it takes, you could work your way up towards 5,700 to 6,000 if they bust this thing through. For now, I mean, who knows? But I'm just saying, there you go. And if you want to look at the big picture, right, we can't we can't live and we can't really live with the technicals and and use them, I think, only when they support. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Uh-oh, somehow I, I messed this up. So we don't want to take the technicals and only use them when the technicals are uh, supportive of our economic take, right? But look, you're near you're near a crossover here. So the very you know I'm not a big MACD crossover player, but on the longer term stuff, it does usually work pretty well and matter. Um, and you're really close to getting that. So again, uh, I'm not really, again, I don't want to sound like I'm suddenly like this big bull, but I have to acknowledge what I see. That's the whole, that's for me, like that's the whole point of me trying to do this for myself, for the services that, uh, you know, I, I'm a part of and for folks that um, I can't, I don't know what I did there. And for folks that, uh, you know, like to get something out of these videos. So I would say, look, you don't, don't think too far ahead. But you don't want to act like if they keep jamming this thing somehow all the way through right in into the spring, you don't want to sit there and be fighting against that. You'll probably have a much better go of it if you're able to uh, much better go of it if you're able to embrace it and work with the primary trend and momentum. So that's that. Let me see here on anything else. Um, so that's, that's the spies. Uh, we'll take a look at, we've got the mag seven right there looking good. We showed breadth, you know, it, it'll just almost be redundant to show the cues, but they, they look, you know, they look primed as well. You know, there's a perfect, almost, you know, perfect cup and handle. Then all my drawings show up, but you get the idea. I mean, it's just there. So you have to always be concerned about a failure to fire. If they take out the high somehow, which, I guess they did actually. They actually did take out the highs there. Yep. Right. 387. 75. What's this one over here? Oh, 387, 98. So they got really close. But if they it's close enough for a double top, it's close enough for a false breakout, it's close enough for a real breakout to possibly happen still. So again, kind of like following up on that um base camp uh concept that I've shared many times. You know, this shallow pullback uh, that it had after this really nice run in this kind of transition into uptrending mode, uh, they uh, they don't have to really push much to get through, right? So it is overbought now. We can't say it isn't, but all it would take would be a nice little brief pullback, get that overbought and it's really beaten down. They, they'd be able to sail right up too. So I was talking about those highs you know, projections, I think maybe like a month ago, maybe three weeks ago, I can't even remember. But this is why, you know, these are some early signs I started to see that maybe they're going to be able to pull this off against all odds. And uh, they might be able to pull this off against all odds, right? And they, like, let's, the bottom line is that they brought, 
They brought the other major index ETFs um, along with them, right? There's the diamonds and I'll get us more of a daily view because I've got to start wrapping things up. I've got to get on the road here. Um, daily view, you know, and you can see there's my resistance line in white and they're well through there. Now, I don't like the way they've done this. You know, I rarely do like the way bulls do things because they, uh, a lot of times I think that they just start foaming at the mouth and going haywire too soon. And then that kind of undercuts the rally in terms of it probably needs to back up sooner and give back a little bit more. And then before you can really go with it, but you know, sometimes they just break away and go, go, go. So, uh, you, you know, you gotta, I think you have to just this point, if you really want to trade both sides, just trade the range, right? New, be a new high buyer. And if you're not terribly overbought, probably more com comfortable as a new high buyer. If it's very overbought, just be an aggressive roller, right? Just kind of be someone who's like, okay, I'm getting in with the RSI at 70 on the long side. I'm going to be an aggressive roller here. Um, if they break this stuff down uh, from below the lows or pick a level, I, I would probably just say to be aggressive, you could probably use this close uh, on Tuesday. And if that gets broken, maybe they start working their way down towards Tuesday's lows, maybe Tuesday's open. And then who knows what, what happens from there. Keep your eye on other things. But look, they brought these along for the ride. This is one reason why Ryan and I selected IWM for the Rebel Pit Pro, I think it was, um, names one of the main focus name of the week. And we put a lot of time into finding these names on a lot of, a lot of different sort of criteria. Sometimes it's a lot easier. There's a ton that we really like that we have to really pick from really great ones. And then sometimes it's like, man, this, these are all tough because some of these are just so pricey to play and we don't want people to get involved in, you know, high dollar, high IV options that are not going to you know, maybe not get a move. So it's, it gets a little tough at times, but um, you know, this, the thunder was stolen. I still think it was a, probably a good week for IWM call buyers that we put the ideas out here, you know, on Tuesday morning, but the gap ruined what I think could have been a, in just an incredible run of catch up by, I, by IWM. And, you know, this is also now showing signs after it's been really left behind. And that was one reason why we really liked it. Um, we talked about that higher low maybe being in place and, uh, so they've got this now above that resistance line that I drew on everything recently for, for all of us to check out. And so they're holding it there. So again, um, I think the tone gets set by NVIDIA and my simple way of looking at it now is that without a real news shift, some kind of a negative news shift or shift in yields in a big way back, back up, I don't see what would derail this because it, it's set as it stands now, if you get a news neutral and yield neutral environment, uh, they're set to to have their normal end of the year party. That's basically it. They might have drawn some of that forward. Maybe, maybe December won't be the super performer. Maybe it's a mild performer because they put so much together in November. I don't know at this juncture, but I'm just saying that I don't know what's going to derail this unless you'd really get a big new shift. So a lot of, cause a lot of good things have happened. We saw that. So I think you have to focus on the price action. Don't forget about the risks, despite all the stuff that I'm saying, but all this stuff is sort of falling in place for them. And I think we really can't deny that. Now there are some rumors out there of different things. There's problems. There's supposedly problems at the uh, bank of Japan. You can't lose sight of this is why you've got to keep your, your, your uh, self tuned into what's happening with the news. But and you all never let your guard down, right? You always anticipate you could have false breakouts, failure to fire, reversals, things like that. But you know, it, it's all part of it's all part of trading, and that's what you've got to do. I think just be to be ready and psychologically ready to react the right way when certain scenarios start to unfold. Um, they don't struggle until we cut, right? So stocks hang in there until the Fed starts cutting, and you can see that they're probably six months away, realistically, roughly speaking, from cutting rates, that would maybe be a time where they would start to uh, get get hit pretty hard. Um, that's usually what happens. Ryan has some information on that. 
Um, so I, I did sort of say this week's important consideration to finish up. Uh, do exactly to the fact that so many stocks were battered under the surface of this market. We can't rule out another leg of the bull developing. The Mag 7 has just been a dynamo and it's just, it's able, it's basically was used to keep the indices looking healthy enough and hold. And if they keep pouring into those, which I wouldn't be shocked if they did, and they bring others along, it's going to be really hard, even if they just use the Mag 7 really hard to get that really serious uh, market correction or beatdown. Like it would, like I said, I think it would take news. So let me just wrap up by doing a quick check. You can see, right, this is what we have to get to for rates to go down. You can see really quickly that yields are still, you know, the, the intermediate term now is more down than up, even though the longer term is still up. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But they're not looking like they're ready to start turning just yet as per the action on Friday. You're getting back towards greed, but you're not really anywhere near extreme greed yet. Um, sentiment, it's a little concerning if you're a bull because they've got this 43.8 reading. So if you notice, right, it was you have to go back to right when the market was um, in the process of starting to correct to get a reading that's near that or higher. So that is worth keeping in mind that if they do kind of exclamation point this market with the NVIDIA jam job, potentially, potentially, that that could be a sell sign, right? That could be the sell on news. And that's when maybe if you're still rolling in a lot of things, you generally cash out or at the very least, you become an over roller that heads towards instead of being in 70 Delta, 75 Delta that you've been riding or maybe even 80, 85 Delta you've been riding. You're in 35 Delta if you decide to stay in at all, is what I'm getting at. And if you look at this, right, the market has improved. So here is the st percent of stocks above the 200 day. It's got, it's getting better. It's, you know, it's, it had a pause as we would expect. Here, I'll work backwards this week. Here's your 50 day. That's improved. And then your 20 day, of course, has improved dramatically. It's maybe a little bit overdone right now, which we're saying, right, you are kind of overbought. So, Short term, you're overbought. Like I said, if 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 I were a bull, what I would want to see is a small backup Monday, a launch into ins insane insano land on on the Tuesday reaction. I think for Nvidia, I would then want to be extremely overbought, sell everything, and then let it mark get marked back down quickly that day and on Wednesday, stabilize it, and then put a little goosing together on Friday to make everything look wonderful. That would be it. Just want to note too, real quickly, VIX, we did finally see a pop. You can see, right, how big of a pop, I'm sorry, big of a hit this was and how we haven't seen anything, right, for a while in there. So someone decided to step in in January, step in big. I just wanted everyone to see that. We hadn't seen many Qs hits of late. Um, we did see some Q hits. I'm sorry, a Q hit. Let me get that one. A Q hit. And look, look at the gap between Q hits. So, right, there, they just haven't been doing much in here. Everything's been working, I guess everything's been working for them, but someone finally did something in the Qs and we have seen IWM get active because there's a real active player in there that likes to do a lot of put rolling. Um, and they finally came in uh, this week. You could see that there was some pretty good action in that with all these different put rolls and things like that. But a little bit of signs in Q and especially VIX that we had things going on uh, that were maybe right indicative of someone thinks it's getting a little too crazy. Maybe they're stepping in. Maybe they think, you know, some kind of news breaks. I don't know, of course, but just wanted to note that for everybody. I think we've covered everything. Um, so, yeah, we've covered everything at that point. So sorry, I kind of jumped all over this week, but I think we really had to uh, because of where we are. It's just a lot of stuff out there and uh, I've got to get sector situation taken care of so I can go get my daughter. So I'm going to end on that note and thank everyone for tuning in as always. I hope you got something uh, out of this video that can help you this week or in a week in the future. And uh, I'll be in touch through updates and cocktail hour and webinars and so on and so forth. So Everyone have a great finish to their weekend and a great start to the trading week. I wish everyone a happy and safe Thanksgiving. And um, let's hope we just get a nice little chill out uh, there on Wednesday and Friday. So 
Uh, there's no shenanigans either way, and we can have a good fresh start to the following week. Everyone take care and thanks again.